Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the, everything you have for every one of us. And we thank you because of the great things we are going to do in every life. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you pour your blessings down upon every one of us in Jesus' name. We ask for every brother, every sister, every invite, every member of the church. That Lord, your blessings will be abundant in every life in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children, our youth, our campus students, our daddies, our mommies, our leaders, our workers, our overseers, everyone, Lord, we pray, will have abundance from heaven this time in Jesus' name. We pray that the expectation of the people of God will not be cut short. You'll fulfill the desires and the aspirations and the demands of your people, even from this night in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight, we're talking about the cross that cancels our curse. The cross, Calvary. The cross, the crucifixion. The cross, how he laid down his life for us, the cross. The death he died for us, the substitutionary death by which he paid the price of our redemption, the cross that cancels our curse. When we talk about the curse, it actually started at the time of the fall. We're looking at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 15. You will see that as far back as Genesis chapter 3, the Lord the Father, the God the Father, has spoken about the crucifixion of Christ and then the purpose of that crucifixion and the end of that crucifixion, the result of that crucifixion and the profit to the children of men, to the humanity concerning the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in chapter 3 verse 15, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, talking about Satan represented by the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. That was the prophecy concerning Christ's crucifixion. The prediction concerning Christ's crucifixion. The father was looking forward to the time when his only begotten son will come. And in fact, he calls him the seed of the woman. He said, Satan will bruise his heel. That's referring to the crucifixion. But then the result of that is that the Lord Jesus Christ by that death by that crucifixion will destroy all the works of the devil by that crucifixion all the yoke will be broken your yokes are broken all the causes will be totally removed the curse in your life removed in jesus name and it is because of what jesus did on the cross of calvary Isaiah chapter 53 we're looking at verse 4 verse 5 and then we'll come to verse 6 as well it says in verse 4 surely he has borne our griefs again he's talking about how he died for us not for himself how he bore a punishment. He didn't have any punishment of his son to bear. It was the death we should have died. That Jesus died. It was the shame that we should have gone through. That Jesus went through. It was a punishment we should have had. That Jesus Christ had. That's why Isaiah said surely. Surely he has borne our griefs. He said it as if it had happened already. Even though Isaiah came about 700 years before Christ was born. He saw it afar off. And he knew that it was decided by the Heavenly Father, it's going to be done. And because of that, he said it as if it had taken place already. Surely, certainly, he, Christ, the crucified one, he, Christ, the one that bore our punishment on the cross of Calvary, he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows, and yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, tell me, with his stripes we are healed. All the curse, he bore that. All the sicknesses, he bore that. All the shame, he bore that. 
all the sorrow he bore that all the punishment and the condemnation he bore that every sin negative that we should have had because of our sins he bore everything and the bible says surely there's no shadow of doubt about this this is what he has done and i pray that you receive the benefit of that even from tonight in jesus name condemnation he will take away the punishment he'll take away the pain and the sickness and disease he'll take away and from tonight it will set you completely free in jesus name look at verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all the cross that cancels our curse the crucifixion that cancels our curse the death of christ on the cross of calvary that cancels our curse the substitutionary work of atonement of jesus christ that cancels our curse three points we're going to look at number one redemption and release by the crucified christ redemption redemption and release by the crucified christ the lord has given us redemption full redemption complete redemption he has also released us from the curse of the law redemption and release by the crucified christ number two repentance and removal of the curse tonight all causes and yokes are broken and taken away in jesus name repentance and removal of the curse repentance 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 means turning away from any sin that brought the judgment of god turning away from all the evil all the things were brought upon ourselves the misbehavior the misconduct the evil the bad character the sin the transgression the iniquity everything turning away from them repentance and when we repent like that then the lord jesus christ in his power because of his atonement because of what he did on the cross of calvary he takes away he removes even the cause and tonight will be that night in your life in jesus name number three is remission and righteousness remission and righteousness remission means it so cleanses your sin it so forgives your sin that it doesn't even remember anymore as if it was never done and the accusation of the devil will fall to the ground because the lord says i don't even remember he's blotted everything away and that on the basis of his cross that he is remission and righteousness through his cross remission of your sin and righteousness the righteousness of christ through his cross we're coming to number one number one is redemption and release by the crucified christ i'm looking at galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 what did in verses 13 and 14 galatians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 here we'll see the great work of the lord jesus christ the result of that the consequence of that the price he paid for your redemption and the price he paid for your total release it tells us in galatians chapter 3 verse 13 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law there's a lot there christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law when you say the curse of the law the broken law god gave commandment to adam and eve they broke the commandment of god as a result of that a curse came upon them and we as their descendants we also inherited that curse from those our forefathers but because jesus christ died on the cross of calvary he has now redeemed us from the curse of that law and all the curse as we believe the lord tonight you are going to find you become totally free in the mighty name of jesus not only that when he called the children of israel he gave them a law 
and all the laws he gave them. He said, there is penalty, there is punishment when the law is broken. And all the penalty and all the pain and all the punishment that became the curse. In fact, he told them, if you do this, this will happen. If you go this direction, that will happen. If you go this way, that will happen. And that became the curse. But then it says now, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. You see that? Because of the death of Jesus. Because of the atonement, you can say, praise the Lord, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, all my curse, the curse coming from the time of Adam and Eve, the curse coming from the time of the children of Israel, all that is taken away. Not only that, if you had joined yourself to maybe a kind of society, a kind of group, and then they laid the law down, and they said, if you contradict this, if you contravene this, if you go against this this will happen and then you became a christian and since that time you have been seeing the consequence of that kind of covenant in your life but that thing tonight is going to be broken or maybe it was her parents that went into a particular association and they said this is for you and for your wife and then for your children for everybody in your extended family we didn't know anything and then the curse came thank god you are here tonight I said, thank God you are here tonight because everything will be broken away from your life in Jesus' name because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us for it is written, cause said is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That means when the curse is taken away, there is no vacuum because blessings will come to replace the curse in your life, in my life, in our lives together in Jesus' name. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith that we might receive. You are receiving something tonight? Yes. That we might receive the blessing of Abraham and the promise of the Spirit through faith. You can see right there we have redemption through Jesus Christ, through his atonement we have redemption. Through his sacrifice we have, we have redemption. And through the shedding of his blood we have redemption. He tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 In whom we have redemption In whom we have redemption Through his blood Through his blood That is through the blood that was shed Before he died We could not have that through his blood But when he died When he split his, his blood When he shed his blood For you and for me It says because of that shed blood Crucifixion Death atonement redemption because of the blood he shed he said in whom now we have redemption it is not that we are going to have it in the future we have it already and you are going to have it today i said you are going to have it today and then you'll be able to say praise the lord jesus died for me jesus took my sins away jesus took my guilt away and he says we have we have we have redemption through his blood it is not through our own effort or through our own sacrifice or through our own giving money to the beggars or through our own making this or making that there are many religious people they go through tradition they go through whatever they're going through and they think that by the works of their hand they'll be able to have this no could my tears forever flow and could my zeal no respite no all these for sin cannot atone thou and thou alone must save that's why it says rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee it is the redemption of jesus christ that gives us all these benefits it's not how you feel it's not what you have done it's not what you have not done it is through the blood of Jesus Christ then it says even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace you are going to have it today in Colossians Colossians very important Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 notice what he's saying here remember we're talking about the cross that cancels the curse every curse and every yoke 
every oppression of the devil of the enemy every kind of confinement imprisonment of the enemy he cancels everything and it is through the blood that is shed for us he tells us in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 who has delivered us who has delivered us as he done it I said as he done it he has delivered us from the power of darkness from the power of darkness those people that stay behind the curtain in a dark shine somewhere and they try to throw a spell upon you were delivered from that already i said i am delivered from that already he says who has delivered us from the power of the of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in the kingdom of his dear son there is no yoke i don't have any yoke in the kingdom of his dear son there is no curse i don't have any curse in the kingdom of his dear son there is a, a there's no oppression by the devil i don't have any oppression you will not have oppression in jesus name look at that verse again let me illustrate it to you like this it's like let's say for example in a particular country in that country all the people the powers that be powers of darkness and powers on the land territorial powers powers in the bush and powers in the field and powers everywhere uniform power on uniform power common power on common power they were running after you purchasing you and then you got a passport and then you got a visa and you travel to another country and those people cannot see you anymore the authority is limited to their own country but now you have been translated to another country in that other country they don't have any passport to go to that country they don't have any visa to go to that country in that other country you are as free as a bird flying in the air totally free i said totally free now when you are in the kingdom of darkness in the kingdom of the devil that is under the power of the enemy they could oppress you they could torment you they could give you brain problem they could give you sickness they could put any yoke upon you upon your family upon your work upon everything that you're doing but thank god i said thank god i said praise be to the name of the lord he delivered you from the power of darkness tell the person by your side he delivered me is that how you say that he delivered me and then he has translated you out 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 of the kingdom of darkness onto the kingdom of his dear son can i remind you when god delivered the children of israel from egypt that's from the power of darkness and he translated them and they crossed the red sea no egyptian could follow the children of israel across that red sea the same thing he has done for you because he has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son then it says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins i have got it i said i got it it will be yours in jesus name tonight all those pressures and all those problems as you stand up in prayer when we finish everything will drop to the ground all the yoke all the oppression all the curse all the things you know you see this now you see this in the day by the time you get up and then you say praise the lord i'm delivered from the power of darkness and he has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son everything will leave you in jesus name it tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Here is what the Lord is telling us. He says, for he is our peace. He, Jesus Christ, is our peace. He, the crucified one, is our peace. Who has made both one. And he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. What does that mean? What does that mean? He has made both one what he's saying is between the jew and the gentile there were privileges that jews had that the gentiles did not have 
There were promises that the Jews had that the Gentiles did not have. But now Jesus Christ, because he died on the cross of Calvary, he has made both one. Everything belonging to the Jews now belongs to the Gentiles. Not, not only that, you know, the men and the women in the, in the olden days, in the Old Testament in particular, there were things men had that women could not have. But now he has made both the men and the women, he has made us one so that all the privileges belonging to the men, they belong to the women as well. In the olden times, the privileges belonging to the adult, the daddies and the mommies that did not belong to the children. It's made everyone one now that whatever other people have, you can have yours too. I said you will have yours too. And then you know that in the past, there was a difference, a wide gap between the Levites and the men and the children of Israel. That is between the clergy and the laity. That is, they will say, these the clergy can have, these lower things, the laity. That is, the general people can have. He has made both one, the clergy and the laity. He has brought everything together. The ministers and the members, he has brought everything together. And whatever I have, you can have. Whatever the other people have, you can have. There is no limit to the blessing coming upon your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Are you there? Are you going to have? You have it already in Jesus' name. Let me read that to you again in verse 14. For he is our peace. He is our peace. Your peace the devil will not take away. Your peace, nothing on earth will take it away in Jesus' name. Who has made both one. And he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his, in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments. Then it says contained in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body. By the cross, by the cross, by the cross. Then it says, having slain the enmity thereby. Any kind of hatred, any kind of enmity between you and then the Almighty God. Because of your past sins, he cancels your sin. He cancels the enmity. And then you are reconciled unto God. He came and he prayed peace unto you which were far, which were far off. And to them that were near, afar off the Gentiles and those who were near the Jews. And then it says, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Thank God that has happened to you already. Now in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you need to see this one. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. We're looking at verse 20. You are delivered. I said you are delivered. You are set free. All those paths of darkness and all the curse and all the yoke, everything is taken away because of Calvary up in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 20, it says, And I will make thee, I will make thee unto this people a fence brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee. I want to remind you that God said this in the future because Christ had not come at that time. But now Christ has come. Emmanuel has come. Emmanuel means God with us. God with you. I say God with you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world in Jesus' name. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. We can, we can even rejoice on the basis of that. I will deliver thee from the hand of the wicked. That makes the, ch the child of God to shout around the Jericho walls. That means that makes us to celebrate because now all the wicked powers, they are broken away from our lives in Jesus' name. And then he says, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. I will, re I will redeem you out of the hand of terrible. Mr. Terrible doesn't have any hold upon your life anymore. 
you know some people they're so bold they come to you they say look at me i am mr terrible i said if you are mr terrible praise the lord i'm not under your power i'm not under your authority because i am delivered already in the day you are delivered in the night you are delivered and whatever the name sir mr terror mr terrible mr wickedness mr satan whatever they are you are set free in jesus name <laughs> chapter 31 jeremiah chapter 31 i'm reading here from verse 11 jeremiah chapter 31 i was looking at verse 11 it says for the lord has redeemed jacob and and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he stronger than he stronger than he all those people that were stronger than you in the past and they could oppress you they could depress you they could make you sick they could do whatever to make your life you are now stronger than they are and they will not have any power any hold any authority over your life anymore because it says he has ransomed you from the hand of him that was stronger than you are praise the lord point number three now repentance and removal of the cause you have something to do you have something to do and as you do your part and your part is very simple it's just like you know you let's say for example around you you have some you know bad things around you there some oppression there some sickness there let's say you could quantify them make them physical or tangible you could hold them and all you do is you get up and you walk away from it you get up and you walk away from it and that is repentance let's say for example now this is a sin that is holding you down and it is a sin that is bringing all the cause all the yoke all the oppression all the pain all the sickness upon your life you just get up and walk away you get up and walk away get up and walk away Away. and as you get up and walk away you're free i said you're free you walk into freedom you walk into deliverance you walk into liberty you walk into into complete deliverance and dominion in jesus name you know there are some people i i, I think we should, we should sometimes use our common sense you have some trouble there some fire burning there some smoke there and you have some kind of oppression of the devil all you and, and they stay there and they stay as they say they say i'm being oppressed get up i'm being i'm being tormented get up i'm facing some challenges get up they won't allow me to do this get up get up and walk away and you're walking your freedom tonight in jesus name that's what repentance means you make up your mind you turn away from evil and the lord is waiting for you already that's what that prodigal son did you know what if he stayed in that poverty in that hunger in that deprivation in that slavery in that in that kind of atmosphere that community and just said i'm perishing with hunger here i'm being deprived of my rights here they're destroying me here my life is not what it ought to be here then get up and that's what he, he said i will arise and go to my father and i will say to my father father i've seen against you and against heaven i'm not worthy to be called your child and then he didn't only think about it he actually rose up and then he got to his father and the moment he got up and left that far country everything changed in his life i come to tell you here tonight everything is going to change your life as you make up your mind and you say oh lord i know i know the answer i know the solution i know my freedom i know my release it's there already all i need to do is get up and move away and the lord will totally set you free in jesus name every chain that binds you will be broken all the fetters that tie you down will be broken in jesus name and let's look at this in ezekiel ezekiel chapter 18 ezekiel chapter 18 don't complain anymore all you need to do is get up and move away and everything will be all right i said everything is all right already look at this ezekiel 18 verse 30 therefore i will judge you O house of israel everyone according to his way says the lord god repent and turn yourself from all your transgression so iniquity shall not be your ruin nothing will ruin you satan will not ruin you demons will not ruin you 
your iniquity will not ruin you in Jesus name it says repent and turn yourself from all your transgression so iniquity shall not ruin you shall not be your ruin cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel I will not die I said I will not die you know, uh, uh, this, this, you sh it shouldn't die in sin. It shouldn't die in the, in the lap of the devil. You can get away from the devil and de the devil cannot hold you down in Jesus' name. And it says, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves, you see that? Turn yourselves and live, you will live. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33. Proverbs chapter 3. You're making up your mind right now. Any bondage in which you have, you know, kind of confined yourself, that bondage is broken. Any satanic imprisonment in which you are, you made a covenant with the devil, and you are in that predicament. All that is broken tonight in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33. It says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Maybe you are in the house of the wicked yourself. And then the curse is there. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the wicked. But because you make yourself to be in that house of the wicked. And then it says, But... He blesses the habitation of the just. When you come out of that wickedness and then you come to the just, you come to the justification by the Lord Jesus Christ, blessings and blessings and blessings will overflow in your life in Jesus' name. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 26. If you have a pen there, if you have anything to mark pencil there, you must mark this one. You must mark this one. Once you mark this one and then you memorize it, you swallow it, you take it in your heart, the devil will never bother you with any curse in Jesus' name. Remember, remember, before you came to Christ, the curse was there. The curse that came upon Adam and Eve came upon all his descendants. Before you came to Christ, all the curse of the broken law in Deuteronomy chapter 28, all that curse was there. But when you came out and you came to Christ, all the curse of Deuteronomy, all the curse of Numbers, all the curse of Leviticus, all the curse in, in Genesis, all the curse in Exodus, the moment you came to Jesus Christ, all that curse, everything went away in Jesus' name. As you look at your Bible, you're going to see some curse in Joshua, some curse in Judges and some cursing you know in all the other parts of the old testament as you left all those things behind and you came to jesus christ all that curse everything is taken away in jesus name apart from genesis to to deuteronomy and then deuteronomy to joshua and judges apart from malachi and all those people if you look at that you are going to see all the curses there then even in your village even in your city, even in your community, you know, in your past life and your past extended family life, all those causes were there. As you left all those places and then you came to Christ, all the yokes are taken away. All the curse is taken away from your life in Jesus' name. And now there is a red sea that divides you from the old life and all the causes of the old life they are over there and then you are over here you are separated there is a gulf in between you the causes will never cross over to meet you again in jesus name now proverbs proverbs chapter 26 verse 2 this is what i said you should mark chapter 26 verse 2 as the bird by wandering and as a swallow by flying so the curse causeless shall not come the curse causeless shall not come i've crossed over onto the promised land the curse causeless shall not come I am identified with Christ. He died for me. He shed his blood for me. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. The curse, costless, shall not come. 
I have left the land of Egypt. I've left all those Amorites and all those Canaanites. I've left all those Gentiles. I'm now on the side of the Lord. I'm in the body of Christ. And because I'm now in the body of Christ, the curse, causeless, shall not come in Jesus' name. He has delivered me from the power of darkness. He has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. And because I'm translated, I'm on this other side now. And it's the kingdom of light. It's the kingdom of power. I'm cleansed in the blood of the land, blood of Jesus. The curse, causeless, shall not come in Jesus' name. My body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost because he lives inside me. If he, the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, dwells in your mortal body, it will quicken your mortal body. And because now I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost, the curse, causeless, shall not come. I said it shall not come. I said it shall not come. It will not come upon your life anymore in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 2 again. As the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the curse, costless, shall not come. You see what he said to me? As the bird by wandering. That means the bird was in this nest before. And all the things in the nest, they could not fly. And then the bird left that nest and left everything in that nest and then wandered away. Or then it says, and the swallow by flying left the nest and then flew away. That means you have gone away from all the things in that nest. All the things in that nest. Everything is now of the past. They will not be in your life anymore in Jesus' name. I come to tell you that your head is free from the curse. Your body is free from the curse. Your dreams are free from the curse. Your children are free from the curse. Your wife is free from the curse. Your husband is free from the curse. The work of your hand, the business you are doing is free from the curse in Jesus' name. You are going to walk out of this place free tonight. Free and free indeed. And the Lord will set you free in Jesus' name. I love this verse. And the bird by wandering and the soil by flying. So the curse, causeless, shall not come. They will not come. I said they will not come. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 19. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 verse 19. It says in verse 9, Repent ye therefore. That is, if all I need to do so that I'm free from the cause to repent, repent ye therefore. If all I need to do is just to get away from Satan and run to Jesus, repent ye therefore. If all I'm to do is to break away from my past and then come to attach myself to the husband of my soul, to the bridegroom of my soul, and come to attach myself to the Lord Jesus Christ, all I need to do is get away from the past and come to this new life and everything will be Come totally new your life in Jesus name miracles you have never seen you will see the wonders you have never tasted you will taste in Jesus name and all that God is waiting for in your life is that all the things of the past you throw them away and then you say I'm not in the past anymore I'm looking to the future now this is my heritage repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord the times of refreshing the times of refreshing shall come unto you from the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of the restoration of all things. The restitution of all things. Restoration. Restoration. Restoration of all things will come to your life in Jesus' name. Everything that you have lost, everything is coming back. A child, you lost a child. Children, miracle children are coming back in Jesus' name. Any good thing you lost, any good thing you lost, any good thing you lost, they are coming back in your life in Jesus' name. 
the joy, the fulfillment, and the liberty, and the freedom, and the prosperity, and the good, good things that made your face to shine, your face will shine again. Because restoration is coming upon your life, whom the heaven must receive until the times of the restitution, restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. In verse 26, don't you false God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning you, in turning away everyone from his iniquity. It will happen. Look at Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. There's a simple step you take. There's a simple thing you do, and then blessings will come upon your life. Are you there? I said blessings will come upon your life. It says in Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen: Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, some people do not understand that. All they think is, okay, I'm born again. And because of that, I should not marry an unbeliever. True, that's right. You should not marry an unbeliever. It's more than that. You know, there are some young people, they go to college. And then in the college, there are some unbelievers that establish uh, what they call, maybe a group or a cult or whatever. And then, because maybe somebody took care of them, somebody is visiting and somebody is befriending them, and they don't understand. And it says, you must not be unequally you together with unbelievers. Any kind of gang, any kind of group, any kind of society, any kind of, um, you know, congregation, that only the unbelievers are there. And then they go through a covenant process to become part of that. You cannot do that because now you have been translated out. It's like, you know, Moses uh, going back to Egypt and say, Pharaoh, I've come back. You will not go back. It's like Aaron or Miriam going back to Egypt and telling Pharaoh, I've come back. You will not go back in Jesus' name. Once you have been delivered out of Egypt and then you cross that Red Sea. In your own case, you may baptize in water and you cross the Red Sea and you come to this other side. You will not cross the Red Sea to go back into Egypt anymore. It will not happen to you. And so when a child of God, when he goes to join affinity with Ahab, he goes to join affinity with Pharaoh, he goes to join affinity with the cult, he goes to join affinity with all those unbelievers, that's what the Lord is saying. The yoke has been broken and that yoke will never come back in your life in Jesus' name. He says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You're not yoked together with them in business. You're not yoked together with them in a covenant. You're not choked together with them in marriage. You're not choked together with them in any kind of association, any kind of agreement. It says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Righteousness and unrighteousness must not be yoked together, must not be in the same group, must not be in the same society. It cannot be, it must not be. And then it says, and what communion? As light or darkness. You are under the power of darkness before now. You have been brought into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. You must not go back to them. And what concord has Christ with Belial? And what part has he that believeth was an infidel? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Say, I am the temple of the living God. Say that again. Say that again. Now, would you, if you have a house, if you don't have a house yet, I pronounce it on you, you are going to have your own house. Now, let's say you, you have a house, and as you have the house, you find somebody that is coming from outside. You didn't employ him. And then he begin to break the window. You fold your hand and be looking at them like this. And then it begins to break the door. It begins to, you know, do whatever it is. It begins to remove the roof. Will you allow that? If you are the temple of the living God, and then Satan wants to come, he wants to put cancer in your body. He wants to put tuberculosis in your body. And then he's breaking down your brain with brain problem. He wants to take your kidney away. He wants to do this. Will Jesus allow that? 
the Lord Jesus will break that head of the devil immediately say don't touch my temple that is my temple that is why I came to tell you tonight everything the, the, the devil came to put upon this temple I'm looking at now all those things I remove them in Jesus name they will not stand I said they will not stand because tonight is the night when the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of God, will be totally free in Jesus' name. He said, because he at the temple of the living God, as, as God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, verse 17, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And I say, Amen and Amen. Let's look at point number three. Now, point number three is remission and righteousness through his cross. Remission and righteousness through his cross. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 28. Matthew chapter 26. We're reading from verse 28. It says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Which is shed for many for remission of sins. It says, If you believe, you are part of the many. If you accept, you are part of the many. If you say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. You died for me. You are part of the many. And it says, For the remission of the sins of many. You ask me, what's the difference between remission of sin and forgiveness of sin? Remission of sin and forgiveness of sin. You see, when you've done something wrong, then God forgives you. God forgives you. Say, praise the Lord, I'm forgiven. But then, you know, if you just have forgiveness alone without remission, the power to overcome that sin, you have been forgiven. You may not have the power. You may go back into it again because you only had forgiveness. But remission, the Lord cleanses you from the inside. It cleanses your brain. It cleanses your mind. It cleanses your habit. It breaks the power of cancel sin. And then on the record of God, in the book of uh, records, it takes everything away. So when the devil comes and he says, uh, why are you? you rejoicing after all were you not like this were you not like that and then when you go to God and say God I am sorry and God says what are you sorry about what I did about uh, two years ago but I've forgiven you and I've remitted I've given you remission already yes but the devil is still telling me this and that and God says wait a minute let me see my record he looks at the book of records it's not even there I said it's not there and so God said, I don't know what you are talking about because it's not a record. It is like you never did that thing in your life. And then you can tell the devil, devil, you are a liar. Can you tell him now? Did he hear you? He is a liar. All those things are not in the, in the records of God anymore in Jesus' name. Because the Lord said, this is the blood, my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of their sins. Praise the Lord. All my sins are remitted. All my sins are taken away. They are blotted out. They will not come into remembrance anymore in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 74. Luke chapter 1 verse 74. That he might grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies no enemy will catch you again delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him how long all the days of our life living one day at a time you remain righteous for the rest of your life in jesus name and our child shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way and to give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. By the remission of their sins. Remember, they will not be remembered against you anymore in Jesus' name. Romans, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. 
And we're reading from verse 25. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Romans chapter 3, and reading from verse 25. It says in verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation is a means of our cleansing, is a means of our atonement, is a means of our forgiveness and remission of sin through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are past. For the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And thank God from now on you can say praise the Lord my sins are forgiven praise the Lord there's remission of sins praise the Lord the Lord of the wicked will not be upon me anymore I said the Lord of the wicked will not be upon you anymore look at this in uh, Psalm 125 Psalm 125 I'm reading from verse reading from verse 3 Psalm 125 verse 3 for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous I thought you'll say amen to that amen. the yoke upon the wicked will not rest upon the righteous the curse on the wicked will not rest upon the righteous. All the oppression, all the devastation coming upon the wicked will not come upon you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5. What are you reading from verse 12 here? Something is happening already. I said something is happening already. You will never be the same again. It says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. He will not curse the righteous, never. He will not punish the righteous, never. He will not oppress the righteous, never. He will not destroy the righteous, never. But for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thou compass him as a shield. And if the Lord has made you righteous because of the death of Jesus Christ on your behalf, because of the shedding of his blood on your behalf, I believe, according to the word of God, that blessings will come upon you from tonight in Jesus' name. Psalm 34, Psalm 34, and I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19, the righteous. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord has delivered me out of them all. It has happened already. Psalm 37, Psalm 37. I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 37, verse 17. It says, For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The arm of the wicked shall be broken. I said, The arm of the wicked shall be broken. You know, some people don't understand that, what it means. You see, there was a time that God sent a man of God from Blame Judah, and he went to where, Jer where Jeroboam was, Jeroboam. And then Jeroboam said, touch him, catch him. And then when he put up his hand like that, what happened to his hand? It dried up. Every hand that is raised against you to destroy you will be cut off in Jesus' name. It, 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 there, was, there was a time that David, David went to the battlefield and then I said the, the Philistines and the Philistines hated David they said that's the man, that's the man that is the man and then when they said that is the man and then what they did is that one of those Philistines wanted to raise up his hand to cut down David and then somebody came from behind and then cut off the hand of that man and destroyed him and when the wicked tried to touch you with their hand God will cut off that hand I love that verse. I want to read that verse again. It says the arms, two, two of them, the arms of the wicked, right hand, right arm and left arm, they try with the right arm and then if they will still not land their lesson, they raise up the other hand, it is gone. I said it is gone. How can a Christian be sorrowful? How can a Christian be, you know, carrying himself under a weight as if, you know, I'm unfortunate, you are not unfortunate, I rejoice with you if you are a believer because the arms of the Ukesh have been cut off in Jesus' name. 
but the Lord, the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Your inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. I'm talking about somebody here today. Who is that? Praise the Lord. You are that righteous person in Jesus' name. Psalm 55, Psalm 55. I'm reading from verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. It says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He will not suffer you as a righteous man to be moved in Jesus' name. Psalm 72, Psalm 72, I'm reading from verse 7, from verse 8. In his days, in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, shall the righteous flourish, you will flourish. An abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. I'm looking at Psalm 112, Psalm 112, Psalm 112, reading from verse 6. Psalm 112, reading from verse 6. Psalm 112, we're reading here from verse 6. And then we're going to read until verse 7. It says in verse 6, surely it shall not be moved forever. It shall not be moved forever. You will not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Tonight, the Lord remembers you. And forever, anytime you come before the Lord, he says, that's my child, that's my son, that's my daughter. Wash in the blood of Jesus. You'll be in everlasting remembrance in Jesus' name. Verse 7, he shall not be afraid. He shall not be afraid. He shall not be afraid. Where are the people? He shall not be afraid. Are you afraid? I said, are you afraid? A child of God, what do we need to what do we have to fear? You will not be afraid of Satan, you'll not be afraid of the paths of darkness, you'll not be afraid of the curse that you know pass by, you'll not be afraid of any yoke and of any arrow flying by day, anything flying by night. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Your heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. You keep on trusting the Lord in Jesus' name. Psalm 118, Psalm 118, I'm reading from verse 15. Psalm 118, verse 15. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The voice of rejoicing. You rejoice yet again. And the right hand, the right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiant, valiantly. Verse 17, you will read this for yourself. Verse 17, one, two, three, go. Now you read, I shall not die, but leave and declare the works of the Lord. Read that again. Now verse 19, open to me the gates of righteousness and I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. Open unto me the gates of righteousness. The gate is open now. The gate is open now because Jesus Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. The gate of righteousness is open. And as you enter into that gate, all your sins of the past, they are gone. All your guilt, condemnation of the past, they are gone. And all the punishment and the yoke and the pressure of the past sin, everything is gone. Open up to me the gate of righteousness and I want to enter in. Get up and enter in. I said get up and enter in. Get up and enter in. No, nothing will tie you down. 
get to up and enter in all your past sins you leave them behind all your past condemnation you leave them behind all your past guilt you leave them behind open to me the gates of righteousness so that the righteous will enter enter into that jesus christ has opened the gate jesus christ has opened the gate jesus christ has opened the gate your sin does not need to tie you down anymore all those evil things do not need to keep you down anymore the yoke the bondage the curse they do not need to tie you down anymore open unto me the gates of righteousness that the righteous may enter in. you can enter in right now you can enter in right now and leave all your sins behind and leave all that yoke behind and leave all the condemnation behind and then leave all Satan, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, leave him behind. Satan cannot talk to you anymore. Satan cannot talk to you anymore. Satan cannot talk to you anymore. If he talks, we're not going to listen because the gate of righteousness is open. The gate of righteousness is open. Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price. Now you are free. Now you are free. Now you are free. You are free from the punishment of sin. You are free from the power of sin. You are free from the yoke of sin. You are free from the condemnation of sin. You are free from the powers of darkness. You are free from Satan that operates all those evil things in the kingdom of darkness. You are free from any covenant you made. In any secret society, open unto me the gates of righteousness and the righteous man, the righteous woman will enter in. Enter in right now. Enter. Lord, I enter. Lord, I enter. Lord, I enter. My guilt is gone. My condemnation is gone. My oppression is gone. All my attacks, they are gone. All the afflictions, they are gone. All the curse is gone. It's gone. And from today, you can say, Praise the Lord. I came out of darkness. I'm now in the kingdom of His dear Son. My sins are forgiven. Not only that, I have redemption. Not only that, I have remission of my sins. He doesn't have any record of my sins anymore. Believe, receive, and rejoice. It's done. It's done. If you have got any yoke, tell the Lord, get up and walk away from it. Any affliction, tell the Lord, get up and walk away from it. Any incurable disease, tell the Lord, get up and walk away from it. Any work of the devil, deformity, get up and walk away from it. In Jesus' name we pray. And the free people of God, delivered people of God, redeemed people of God, ransomed people of God said, I am free, where are you? I am free, where are you? I am delivered. Where are you? All my oppression is gone. Where are you? My sins are forgiven. Where are you? I am translated. I am translated. I am translated out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. If you believe that, where are you? If you are standing on that, where are you? We are going to pray now to confirm that freedom. And to confirm that deliverance. Remember, remember, remember any yoke, any oppression, any guilt, any condemnation. Just get up and walk away and you are not condemned anymore. Your salvation is secured in Jesus' name. Your forgiveness is ascertained in Jesus' name. And every yoke of the devil, every power of darkness is cancelled away from your life tonight. Tonight, God will put a testimony in your mouth. Peace of God in your soul. And the joy of salvation in your soul. 
and complete total deliverance and dominion in your life in Jesus name raise up your hand to the Lord Father in the name of Jesus we thank you because the cross of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, he died for us on the cross of Calvary that cancels every curse. I pray, Lord, all the curse, all the condemnation, take everything away in Jesus' name. That forgiveness you purchase for everyone. I pray, Lord, as they get up and walk away from all their past sins and they repent and turn away, I pray that assurance of forgiveness you grant unto them now in Jesus' name. Not only forgiveness, remission of their sin. That in the book of records, you cleanse away all the sin in their own heart, in their own memory. You cleanse away the sin and then you break the power of the cancel sin from their lives in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone right now because Jesus died for them. You've opened the gate of righteousness. I pray that everyone will enter in into that gate of righteousness in Jesus' name assurance of salvation joy of salvation the victory of salvation the power to live in newness of life grant unto everyone in jesus name and now all the consequences of sin cancel everything Every cause in any life i command all the cause and all the yoke and all the oppression in your life Come out in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every infirmity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, touch the eyes of the blind. I command those blind eyes, be opened in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, paralyzed, one leg shorter than the other, or with that hand, I send the power of God upon you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now. Anyone that has been under any oppression, any curse, any curse from anywhere, from any broken covenant, I remove that curse. I remove that curse and all the all the pain of that cause all the terrible things happening to you because of that cause i cancel from your life in jesus name lord release everyone release everyone i release you into blessing i release you into joy i release you into miracle I release you into total freedom, deliverance, and, and dominion in Jesus' name. Put testimony in every mouth. Confirm the miracle in every life. Above all this joy of salvation, victory of salvation, power of salvation, let it remain permanent in their lives in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, And the people of God said, Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus.